Hey guys, welcome back to Greg's Fish Room. Today we are doing a greenhouse tour of the aquaponics greenhouse system. This is the summer of 2023. So come along with me and learn how to be a better Aquarius. All right guys, here we are outdoors at the greenhouse. Again, this is the summer of 2023 aquaponics greenhouse tour. This is a Grandio greenhouse and it's the uh, Gabriel or Grant Gambrel style of roof. You can see it's got this nice slope to it. I like it because it gives you extra head height room inside the greenhouse. Uh, and it's just generally more enjoyable. It just feels uh, a lot airier and roomier inside. So this is the 12 foot wide by 16 foot long model. And essentially, I think it's just two of the 12 by eight foot kits that sort of get assembled together. And so uh, this is what it looks like here. As you can see, it's in the side of my yard that has quite a lot of tree cover and uh, over here, the morning sun, we get quite a bit of morning sun, but by the time we get to noon time, uh, it's partial shade, and by the time we get to the afternoon, it's just full shade. So uh, we're not growing um, like fruiting vegetables in this aquaponics greenhouse. I've tried in the past, we just don't get enough sunlight. Uh, but greens grow really rapidly. Uh, whether it's lettuce or other things. I've tried those things in the past. But this year, what I've decided to focus on is floating aquarium plants uh, because they're just easy. And so we'll go through everything that's growing in here, the fish system over here, the plant system over here. We'll go through it all in this video. But for those of you that are new that haven't seen this greenhouse before, I wanna walk through all of the components very briefly so that you understand exactly how this greenhouse is constructed, all of the major elements within it, how it's all plumbed up, wired up, and uh, functioning. So if you wanna skip around, there'll be time stamps in the description down below so that you can jump to whatever part is most interesting for you. So um, at the very beginning, I set up this side of the greenhouse. These are 60 gallon Laguna tubs and they are roughly four feet long. And so that fits nicely on the side here. Whereas these IBC totes, they're also about four feet long and they fit nicely on this side. So in my opinion, a 12 foot wide greenhouse is really where it's at for any of this like small scale aquaponics uh, type stuff because you've got four feet over here to work with. You've got roughly a four foot walkway and then another four feet over here. So it just works out perfectly. And uh, in my opinion, that's, that's what you wanna shoot for. So I can pull any of this stuff out, drag it out if I need to, this walkway is big enough. So it definitely feels roomy enough in here. But the Laguna system is the first one that was installed. And so this is six Laguna tubs, 60 gallon tubs in a row. And what I've done here is I've got them on a cinder block, uh, simple stand. So these are just your, your normal size cinder blocks, three stacked high. I put them on the side like this so I can put additional shelves in if I want to. Uh, we've got two by sixes here, which I've just laid on top. There's a video of the construction of this stand if you wanna go find it. Um, and I just laid all of these tanks down on the two by six boards on top of the, the cinder block stand and so that gives me room to work underneath it gives me storage space underneath and it's just generally uh, a nice height to be able to walk up to and I can just get my hands straight in these tanks so how we have these plumbed is we have a 1,000 gallon in-ground pond outside which we'll go take a look at later that has a return pump a big return pump down inside it and that's pumping water up into this greenhouse so as you can see way back here we've got a uh, black plastic pipe one inch pipe that's coming in from the outside it's coming through our uv sterilizer to kill any of the algae and then it's pumping up here and we actually we started by putting this in both directions but what we found out was this side is a little bit higher 
this side is a little bit lower and the flow rates weren't uh, equalizing out very well even though we have the uh, the control uh, adjustment so what I decided to do was just do two pumps so the big return pump that's down in the pond is pumping through here I cap that side off and then essentially this just goes to all six of these tanks so you can see we've got our one inch PVC line which goes down to a half inch PVC uh, ball valve and then uh, we can control the flow going into each one of these six Laguna tubs and so the flow rates not super high it doesn't need to be all it needs to do is essentially uh, turn this water over uh, a few times an hour and so it's doing that and then where that water is going is out these overflows and so this is just again a one inch bulkhead that was drilled in the side of these Laguna tubs you can see that duckweed's going out the uh, the overflow there and I just have this uh, one inch overflow screen with a one inch uh, PVC cap on it and that seems to work well enough in the past I've had these things clog up and overflow uh, so I do keep an eye on it but I haven't done anything to these all um, all summer and they've been perfectly fine I haven't even uh, wiped them off or anything so uh, they haven't clogged up this year and I'm happy that I have my drain lines running on the front side I originally set it up with the drain lines on the back side and that was a pain in the neck because when they did plug up it was impossible to fix it so uh, having everything right in the front easy to access is super super convenient so this is a one inch bulkhead overflow with an elbow and uh, this is just to prevent people from bumping into it really but then that just goes into a flexible pipe down into our two inch PVC drain line and again this drains all the way down and over and then that goes through the ground outside to the thousand gallon pond that we'll look at in a minute so that's how that side is set up and in terms of what we have in here we've got a lot of floating aquarium plants now this is I guess the mixed bin with a few different things in it uh, we've got some hornwort that seems to be doing pretty well even though it's getting mostly shade over here in the corner uh, this is the side of the greenhouse that I think gets the most shade and then we've got some American Val in here jungle Val uh, seems to be doing okay as well I'm sure both of these would enjoy more light but they're just not getting it so uh, they're growing kind of slow the duckweed is kind of taken over in this bin <laughs> I told myself I wasn't have any duckweed out here this year and uh, of course you can see what happens it grows no matter what um, so that's what's in this bin uh, no fish in here at all just some plants for now uh, this was a little bit of an experiment these are actually baby alder trees um, I've got the the alder cones that I'm selling on Amazon uh, you can find a link to that down in the description and uh, I collected some of the seeds from those cones and I just I was playing around with seeing if they would actually germinate and they did so this is just a little experiment here but I might try to uh, pot some of these at some point and see if I can overwinter uh, a few of these alder trees kind of a cool little experiment and I just have them in like a, a little uh, aquaponics tray here um, and I just water it every once in a while so they're growing and doesn't seem like they're very uh, very picky sometimes it's way too uh, wet in the, the soil sometimes it's way too dry but they seem to be doing okay over here next bin we have red root floaters and I only got these mm, I would say a month ago maybe a little bit less and so um, they're about 50% coverage in this bin I think in another week or two it will be full coverage uh, in this bin I try to uh, keep these uh, return lines with uh, a little bit of like a, a protection here like a shield in place to make sure it's not splattering too much on these leaves you can see there's some water droplets on some of those leaves most of your floating plants are not going to enjoy uh, getting wet on top uh, they want to be nice and dry on top and so um, if you can accomplish that then you can get a, a pretty good spread and uh, you can see that here uh, it's funny enough some of this stuff seems to be clumping up and some of it's like almost out of the water it's sort of like growing on top of itself which is kind of neat but um, yeah I don't know exactly how red these red root floaters are 
not very, uh, but they are getting plenty of nutrients in this system from all the goldfish and whatnot. And uh, again, they're not getting a ton of sunlight. So those may be some of the contributing factors, but I'm looking forward to getting a full tub of these red root floaters here by the fall time and then hopefully I can bring some of those to some of the local uh, aquarium auctions. Okay, over here we've got some frog bit and again I only picked this up I think two weeks ago and uh, it was only like one big handful so in a week or two it's already spread to about half of this tub. I would say in another week uh, it's probably going to be full coverage here and it's, it's doing very well. Um, you can see some of the new growth, some of those uh, light green leaves, those are the newest leaves on these, and so you can see almost all of them are growing new leaves, they're sending out uh, little plantlets on the, the side shoots, and they seem to be doing very, very well. You may also get a glimpse at some of the goldfish that are in here, there's one. Um, these, this is what happens every single year <laughs> with this with this aquaponics system. There's another one. Uh, they're very skittish and uh, they probably feel a little bit too exposed in here. But um, these are new to this pond for this season. And what happens every single year is the goldfish that are out in that thousand gallon pond, they spawn and some of the eggs uh, inevitably get sucked up by the return pump and they get pumped through this one inch line uh, and then they enter uh, these tanks and then some of them hatch and then some of them start growing out. Um, I didn't initially see them, I never do, for the first few weeks. And so they're feeding on just the live foods and the flies and everything else that falls in and lives in uh, these tubs. And then when they're big enough to see, obviously I start feeding them uh, some flake and some pellets. So I think there's at least four or five of them in there. And uh, again, I'll probably give those away to uh, one of the club auctions here uh, coming up. All right, this tub is, I believe, Salvinia. And again, I got like a handful of this like three weeks ago, something like that. You can see the, the older ones that I received in the mail uh, are these brown ones that are all sort of shriveled up and dead or dying. And uh, I made the mistake of ordering these when it was like at the, the height of like the really warm spell uh, this summer. And so I would say 90% of what I got was just totally cooked uh, in the mail. Even though I, I grabbed it right as soon as the mailman delivered it, uh, they were just basically just fried to death. But some of them survived. And as you can see, again, we've got about 70% mm, coverage here. And I would say within an, another few weeks, uh, it'll probably be fully covered and then we'll start giving away some of that at some auctions as well. We do have uh, some water on top of these leaves here closest to this uh, uh, return line and so those are the plants that probably won't do quite as well but everything else uh, is doing great. All right, this one took off. This is absolutely insane. Um, this is dwarf water lettuce or at this point, it's just water lettuce. Uh, it's basically full, full grown, full size. Uh, they started off about this size, and uh, I got them, I believe, this past fall or winter. And uh, a few of them survived indoors over the winter. Uh, I had just a few of them left. I wasn't even sure if they were going to make it. And then look at them now. Like they're they're full size, and they've they've grown so large, and all the leaves have sort of grown on top of each other. Uh, that they sort of choked out all the smaller, tinier plants underneath them. So these these are definitely full size and they are sucking out um, so many of those excess nutrients from the water that it's crazy. So this is why I'm able to get away with having so many goldfish uh, in this system. And so even these, like, you know, the, even though I've got the overflow here and all these plants are just like fully loaded around it, uh, it's not causing any problems. So we have just a, a small trickle of water coming in and then just a small trickle of water leaving. And uh, again, this isn't clogged up, so it's, uh, it's doing really well. So that's our water lettuce. And then over here, we've got some water hyacinth. And this I picked up this spring um, from a local uh, aquarium store. And I maybe got like three or four of them 
that were about this size and they were pretty bad. They were brown, some of the leaves were broken and damaged and uh, again like I wasn't sure if they were going to make it but what I did was I put them over here and this is the sunniest of the bins because it's it's got quite a bit more sunlight that comes straight in through here especially in the morning so these two were able to grow sort of like gangbusters here um, and completely take over this tank so just nice big full grown healthy leaves here on this water hyacinth and uh, it's just awesome. It's completely taken over this bin. Um, I probably got enough room here for maybe a few more to grow, but again, they're basically shading themselves out to the point where um, not a lot of new growth is gonna happen. They're just gonna continue to get a little bit bigger uh, in this tub. So these two specifically are my um, nitrogen sponges. They're just pulling out all of the, the nitrates from the water, um, and so that's why they're here. Uh, I may bring some of this in over the winter and try to overwinter it, uh, but it's usually not very successful. They, they love the natural sunlight and so that's what they're getting out here. So again, all of these are spilling over here down out to the pond. We'll go take a look at that system in a few minutes, but it's time to take a look at the other side of this system, which I put up last year. Uh, and so this is my second full growing season uh, out here with these IBC tubs. And uh, I'm super happy that I added these tubs in. It has completely transformed the way I use this greenhouse um, in a good way. And so what I've decided to do with this system is grow my fish. And so what I've done here is I've selected four fish one species for each of these four tubs and they are all egg scattering fish so in this one we have white cloud mountain minnows and um, I don't know if you can see through all of the glare but there are quite a few adults down there and even more fun we've got quite a few babies down there uh, hundreds and hundreds of babies and we've got maybe two or three dozen uh, adults in there as well. Now, I started all of these adult fish out in these floating baskets. Uh, you can go take a look for that video. I was confident that these were gonna work, but I think there are three things that prevented these from working as well uh, as I thought they would. And so after a month or two of use of these baskets, having all the adults in there spawning, um, and then all of the fry protected just in the rest of the IBC tote, I decided to take these out. I, I just pulled them and I threw all of the adults just straight into the tub. That's exactly what I did last year and I had really good results with that. I thought I was gonna increase my yield by using these baskets, but I think I actually decreased the yield uh, in the process. And, so there's two or three reasons uh, why I think that happened. First was these uh, probably were not large enough. And so when these fish are spawning, they like to be able to zip around, chase each other. And I don't think I was giving them enough room to do that, uh, especially when there was two or three dozen adult fish in a basket like this. It's basically the biggest uh, laundry basket I could find of this style, but it just still wasn't large enough. So. That, it was a floating basket, it worked okay, um, but you know, they just started jumping out. And so it wasn't large enough, they started jumping out, and so it, it basically negated the fact that I was even using it. Um, and to prevent them from jumping out, I started putting some of that water lettuce on top, but then I couldn't see down below to see how dirty uh, some of those rocks were becoming. And so as those got clogged up with debris, uh, I think less of the eggs we're actually uh, dropping through uh, those stones at the bottom uh, and into the IBC tote. And so the end result was I think I was just getting less fry. Uh, and so I made the decision to just pull all of the baskets and put all of the adult fish into the IBC tote and just hope that they were going to not predate on their young. Um, and so far that seems like it's working out okay. I'm not sure what my final yield is gonna be here for this season, uh, but we will see 
towards the end uh, of the fall when we pull all of these fish out. But uh, I am excited that I'm starting to see clouds of young fry here swimming up near the surface. And again, sorry for the glare. This is just really hard to get good footage uh, inside these totes. But yeah, we got lots of white cloud fry started in here, at least a couple hundred. So I'm really excited to see that. And again, um, this is just another um, one inch line, uh, which goes down to a half inch ball valve, which brings water into this tank. We've cut the, the top off of this IBC tote real nice. We've left the bars in place uh, to keep it nice and secure. And we've drilled, again, a one inch bulkhead going to a two inch drain line which goes back down into um, the 1,000 gallon pond outside. Same as the other side of this system. Uh, okay, so that was the White Cloud Mountain Minnows. We were well on our way to getting fry out of that. Super excited. We got some pothos, some more pothos, and some more pothos up top, just for some character in here. And the next IBC tote here is Golden White Clouds. And again, we're going to have a real tough time seeing down in here through all of the glare. There's some of them. We definitely have golden white clouds in here. There's at least two dozen adults, I think, that I started with in here. And I have not seen the explosion of fry in this tank yet, like I have with the regular white clouds. And I'm wondering if it's because the adults are able to see the fry a little bit better. Now that I say that, I do see a few fry up here at the at the top, so they might just got, have gotten started a little bit later um, than the white clouds. So hopefully they're not eating their fry, and hopefully the golden color doesn't mean that they're able to find them and feed on them easier, but time will tell. We'll compare um, the production of the white clouds versus the golden white clouds at the end of the growing season. Next up, maybe my favorite out of all of the fish that I have out here. These are the Rainbow Shiners. And it's going to be real tough to see these because they are quick. And since it's a native fish, um, <laughs> they're, they're pretty good at camouflage, especially from looking from the top down. So let's get a little bit of food here. Let's maybe try to feed them and see if we can get them to come to the surface just a little bit. Now, you'll notice that there's also these lines heading into the water. And what I did was, last fall, I collected um, a few gallons of oak leaves, dried oak leaves. I dried them out over the winter, and then I put them in these big bags, these big floating bags, um, in the IBC totes for the summer. And so that allows them to slowly decay over the course of the summer. And that feeds the infusoria, um, the paramecium, that are in this outdoor pond system, uh, which are then feeding the very baby fry as they first hatch. So before they're able to find this flake food and eat it, um, they are definitely finding the uh, infusoria, the paramecium, floating through that water that are feeding on those leaves. Alright, these guys might be a no-show, but we've got um, close to two dozen rainbow shiners in this tub, and they are just difficult to film. Maybe we'll get lucky and one will swim by. But, they're in there. They're just very shy and they're hard to film. So um, they are very stunning in an aquarium, uh, especially when they're colored up with their breeding colors. Uh, I'm kind of sad that I don't get to see them on a daily basis, um, but I'm hoping that this setup is going to allow them to breed uh, and that I'll get quite a few babies uh, out of it by the end of the summer, although I have not seen any babies yet so far. So cross my fingers and hoping these work out rainbow shiners. Okay, and then the last one over here, and hopefully we can see these as well. These are the Vietnamese white clouds, and oh yeah, 
There's a lot of glare, but you can definitely see them in there. These are Vietnamese white clouds, which are harder to find than your normal white clouds. And there are a ton of babies in there already. Um, these ones did really well for me indoors in my 50 gallon low boy that was covered with java moss. Uh, they spawned like crazy in that tank and I can tell you already they're spawning like crazy out here uh, in this tank as well. So this tub being on the end of the greenhouse it gets quite a bit more light especially on this side and uh, I don't know if that's helping with any of the the algae growth um, or if it's easier you know to, to for the, the baby fish to sort of seek and find their food um, but they seem to be doing stunningly well and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they're going to compete with the white clouds here for a final count on uh, fry so there there are hundreds of fry in here already that I can see and again sorry that um, we've got so much glare here but they're in there and these are the Vietnamese white clouds so that's the last of the IBC totes on this side of the greenhouse and again we've got that um, pond pump that return pump line that's coming in from this side and it pumps up to these four IBC totes um, specifically so they get their own flow of water from the outdoors so that's the greenhouse we've got some um, shop lights some LED shop lights up top so we can turn those on at night just to walk around in here and see uh, we've got a few nets hanging up top and we've got a linear piston air pump that's hanging up there and uh, that supplies a, uh, a good stream of bubbles to our outdoor um, um, filter system which we'll go take a look at in a second and I also use it to provide uh, a steady supply of air to the thousand gallon outdoor pond during the winter. Uh, we need to keep a hole in that ice to keep those goldfish alive uh, over the winter. So with that said, um, all of these get drained down in the greenhouse. The entire greenhouse gets drained down during the winter. It just it gets far too cold in here. Uh, it would be way too expensive to try to heat it. Um, but everything gets drained out and moved either uh, into the house, into the fish room, uh, or we sell it off at auction uh, in the fall. So that's a look at the greenhouse. Let's go outside and look at the pond. All right, if you thought the inside of the greenhouse was cool, the outside is just as cool and zen. There are videos of me installing this thousand gallon pond. You can go check those out. I also installed the small retainer wall and the brick patio around it as well. And this is one of my favorite places to hang out. It's just so tranquil here in the backyard. It's got mostly shade here. And uh, those drain lines from the greenhouse run underground over into this big green um, barrel. And this is one of those big rain uh, catchment barrels that you would set up next to the side of your house uh, to collect rainwater from your gutters. Uh, I have repurposed that as a big uh, fluidized bed filter, which we'll go take a look at in a minute. But that then comes out through this two inch PVC line into the thousand gallon pond. Um, this is, uh, I believe, about eight or nine feet wide by, ten, uh, by four feet deep, uh, four feet deep. And so in the winter, we might get uh, up to a foot of ice on that pond at times, but uh, the goldfish have survived. Every year that they've been out here, they've survived. I haven't lost a single goldfish to a winter yet. And so uh, they seem to be doing very, very well out here. We also have uh, a lot of junipers and things for a future bonsai projects. And uh, then we just got some natural uh, pachysandra uh, ground cover here. So uh, lots of plants going on out here. And as you can see, the water lettuce has completely dominated uh, this thousand gallon pond to the point where we can't even see the goldfish uh, except for through this one little window here. And I have not fed them yet, so they're probably uh, getting hungry. 
But uh, the first project we need to do out here before we talk more is get some of this water lettuce out of here. Uh, no one wants it. I've tried uh, giving it away on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, it's just it's growing too rapidly and as you can see it's it's getting just enough sunlight um, to not get burnt by the sun um, and it's just growing like crazy so lots of smaller plants in here um, but we got to clear some of this away so we can actually see into the pond so let's do that right now cleaned off about two-thirds of the surface here so that hopefully we can at least see these goldfish and uh, we've stirred up quite a bit of the uh, sediment uh, that's in the bottom of this pond which will need to be vacuumed out in the fall but for now this is the goldfish pond thousand gallon goldfish pond not eaten today so we'll see if they uh, decide to come up of course I just disturbed them so who knows but um, you'll notice that there's a few different types of goldfish in this pond there's some that are just sort of like uh, full white or full gold or maybe um, a combination of gold and white and some have butterfly tails some have normal tails all of those were feeder goldfish that came from um, like a, a Petco or PetSmart uh, I've had them for six seven eight years at this point and um, they're doing super well. Some of them are uh, about a foot long. So uh, just goes to show you those little goldfish that you get at the at the fair or uh, the feeder goldfish that you get um, at the store. They get big too. And uh, this is what they turn into when they're given a proper environment to thrive. And so the other goldfish that are in here are the calico colors. They've got the, the white, the black, and the, the gold, the orange. And those ones came from uh, Green Oasis Farms uh, when they were selling on eBay. Uh, so I picked up a number of those when they were very tiny, uh, I think three, four, five years ago. And so again, they've grown quite large as well. They've got nice tails. Uh, I believe they're the Shabunkins. And so um, it sort of toes a, a nice line between a fancy style goldfish with longer flowing fins and nice color um, and, and also still a functional body shape, which is really important to me out here in this pond uh, because there's always the potential of a raccoon or a blue heron or something coming to this pond and trying to catch these fish. It hasn't happened yet, I think it's because I've got a lot of uh, shade over here and so they just don't happen to, to see the pond. Um, but it could happen. And so if it does, I, I wanna give them the best chance they can to survive. And so a nice like torpedo body shape um, is much more natural for a goldfish, uh, in my opinion. And so that allows them to quickly dive when they need to, to escape uh, any predators. And so that's what we've got uh, in here. None of the, the fancy goldfish that just bobble along or can't see straight or can't swim straight. So um, we've probably got close to four dozen adult size goldfish uh, in this pond and they are getting enormous. And so that's, that's what's feeding all of these uh, floating plants and why these floating plants are growing so successfully in here is because of the amount of uh, waste all of these goldfish are producing. So I was looking for a nice big fat fish that produces lots of waste um, to feed all of the plants to make this a successful aquaponics system. And I'm happy to say these goldfish have done an excellent job. This pond is too small for koi um, I think that's very clear, but it is a great size here for our goldfish, and they are just loving it. 
Uh, I may need to sell some of these off at some point uh, if it gets to the point where it's just getting too overloaded. But when these start getting cooler in the fall and they stop eating and they go down towards the bottom, um, they produce less waste, they consume less oxygen, and uh, so far they've all survived the winter. So that's a look at the goldfish in the pond. Let's set this tripod down and we'll take a look at the filtration. All right, here's the pond, and in terms of the filtration, we have those drain lines coming in from the greenhouse uh, down under the floor of the greenhouse out under the ground here about I would say six inches to a foot deep uh, technically it's still uh, high enough to the surface where it could freeze and so that's why in the winter time we just drain all these out and so uh, we don't have any cracked pipes or anything but that two inch drain line runs underground here it goes over here towards the pile of uh, water lettuce that I just pulled out. It's got an, a 90 degree elbow and then it goes into the side of this rain barrel. Uh, again, underground. We've got a uniseal, a two inch uniseal, and that PVC pipe goes straight through into that rain barrel. And I've dug this down about three quarters of the way into the ground. I believe this is about a hundred gallon uh, size here. It might be a little bit larger. And I've just got this top over here to protect it from uh, too many bugs and whatnot. But if we pull this off, um, this is actually, you know, that's supposed to be what catches all your leaves uh, in your gutter. So pull that off, and what we can see inside is that two inch pipe with the uniseal. And so all of the water from all of the tanks in the greenhouse flow out into this tub out here. And you can see we've got our K1 micro in here and we've got the uh, air um, from that linear piston air pump in here as well. So all of that's mixing in here. It's self-cleaning media. I don't have to touch this. Uh, I let this go all season without doing any filter maintenance at all. Zero filter maintenance. And so this gives me my uh, biologic filtration capability for all of these tanks that I'm running. And so in here as well, we've got a two inch pipe here, which has a, like a, a screen on it to make sure that the K1 micro doesn't get through. Uh, but then that overflows here through this two inch pipe and uniseal out the top here above ground back into our pond. So all of the water that's coming from the greenhouse goes underground, takes a 90, comes in here, we got our K1 micro going, and then it shoots out, overflows back down into the pond. So that return pump that's in the pond is pulling water out of the pond. Again, it loops up here, goes under the greenhouse, and then it spits that water back into those tanks. And then all of that overflows, and then it comes back down here. So that's the loop. That's how the water gets through this entire system. And uh, this is a new addition as of last year. Uh, and I'm super pleased with how it's turned out. And so I'm just going to let the plant sort of grow around it. And hopefully after a few years, we won't even see it. But that is the filter for this entire system. And you may be asking yourself, where's the mechanical filter? Well, there isn't one. Um, and that's by design. Um, if I was trying to keep the water crystal clear with no particulate matter, I would definitely need a mechanical filter. Uh, but as it is, we're outdoors and leaves and sticks and dirt and bugs and everything is falling into this pond every single day. And that stuff eventually sinks to the bottom. Some of it gets sucked up by the return pump and some of that debris will end up in the tubs and every fall, when I drain everything out, I just scoop out any of the sludge that happens to build up uh, in those tubs. But those will all act as sort of settling containers. Um, and the water that's flowing back down through here is pretty clean, pretty clear. All those roots that are in all of those plants 
and just the fact that the water is flowing so slowly through such large bodies of water in all of those tubs and totes um, means that that water stays pretty clear and all of the heavy particulate settles out and then that gets uh, siphoned out there uh, at the end of the year. And then I do the same thing out here at the bottom of this tub uh, once in the fall before winter. But the water stays in this year round, the fish stay in this year round and they're super, super happy about it. So that's a look at the filtration and the thousand gallon outdoor pond. It really is the perfect setup here for aquaponics, for growing fish, for growing plants. I couldn't be happier with the way that this turned out and what it's able to produce for me here. I hope you guys enjoyed the walkthrough. All right guys, and that's gonna do it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the walkthrough of this aquaponics greenhouse system. Uh, it's been a lot of fun evolving this system over the years, and I think I've really started to fine tune everything involved, all of the pieces and parts to this system to make it really work well together. I've got the right amount of fish, I've got the right volume of water, I've got the right flow, I've got the right number and type of plants, and everything just seems to be working perfectly this year. I'm really hoping I pull a lot of fry out of those IBC totes uh, in the fall, and I hope I'm able to collect a lot of plants as well and actually sell some of those instead of just disposing of them. But when you're growing so many, that's what happens. Uh, just no one wants them because they grow faster than the demand. But anyways, that's a look at the system. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed walking through all the elements of this system. Uh, if you did, please consider hitting the like button down below, subscribe to this channel to see more content like this. And if you haven't heard, I am organizing the NEC Tropical Fish Convention for 2024 uh, and there's a fundraiser up above. So if you click on that fundraiser, you can donate to help that Tropical Fish Convention happen. It's a nonprofit organization. All of the money goes back into the event. So anything we can raise will definitely help make that event more successful. So go check out that fundraiser link. and. If you want to help support this channel, you can always go check out Nature Forged Aquatics on Amazon. It's my brand and I've got a lot of great natural aquarium products for sale on Amazon, Amazon Prime. Go click the button, you'll get it in two days and hopefully you love it. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later.